Fast Drop Texas is well known for its rich history, natural beauty, and an authentic vibe that you just can't find anywhere else. The city of Fast Drop is proud to bring you Overheard at City Hall, a podcast aimed at bringing you, our community, inside the walls of City Hall to get to know the hardworking men and women of the city of Fast Drop who wake up every day to serve you, our citizens. Join us as we discuss the many topics that on any given day may be Overheard at City Hall. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Overheard at City Hall. I am Bastrop City Manager Paul Hoffman. I'm I'm really pretty pumped up for this sec this session. Uh, I am meeting this morning with new Bastrop Police Officers uh, Jalen West and Dylan Judd. How you guys doing? Pretty good. Happy to be here. Good. Same, I'm glad. Uh, I'm happy to be here too. Nice to meet you. Great. Yeah, it's nice to really meet you. We, we did meet briefly, but no, this is an opportunity for me to uh, get to know both of you guys a little bit better, too. So appreciate you guys taking the time. Of course. So we'll start with uh, you, Dylan. Tell us just a little bit about yourself, where you're from, a little bit about your family. All righty. Um, really grew up here in Bastrop. I right. uh, lived in Cedar Creek for a little bit, uh, moved to Bastrop, um, went through the school system, Uh, My brother played basketball for the high school and a little bit of college. Um, He really enjoyed it. Uh, Joined the fire department after the senior year Mm -hmm. of high school. Mm -hmm. Um, Thought that was, you know, what I wanted to do and um, kind of met the community, got to engage with a lot of people. And uh, a little bit after that, you know, I started doing uh, 911 dispatching. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, It was a lot of work. Mm Um, but I was, you know, looking to really kind of be more in the community and engaging with the community and helping the community. And that's what made me, uh, push myself to go to the police academy. That's awesome. So that's where I that's am great. now. <laughs> and so you still have family here? Oh yeah. Everybody lives here. That's terrific. So, yeah. Yeah. So Jalen. All right. Uh, mine's a pretty extensive background as far as, uh, living in Bastrop County. Okay. Uh, I haven't been as local to the city, but I've been almost anywhere in Bastrop County. Uh, I grew up, started in Michelle, went to Tahitian, uh, Smithfield, and now currently I'm um, in Cedar Creek. Went to Cedar Creek High School. Uh, I'm still a student at the University of Texas at Austin. Okay. Uh, there I'm majoring in psychology. Um, and again, what really pushed me into this career, this career choice, is I'm a minister. Uh, and so I, I minister at Mount Pleasant Primitive Baptist Church in Cedar Creek. Um, and I, I just wanted more ways that I could help my community as far as I've seen them at church, I've seen them within the congregation, and I was like, I can help them spiritually, but I wanted to push myself in the ways that would be more proactive for the community, start yeah. helping it, engage Feed your sheep. more. Absolutely. Yes, uh, and so from there, uh, I decided, you know what, let me look uh, at the job listing site for City of Bastrop, okay. see if anything's available. Uh, and believe it or not, it was the civilian cadet. And I was like, well, I guess this is my chance. So I applied and now I'm here. All right. So let's mention the civilian cadet. Uh, both of you tell me a little bit about your academy experience. You want to go first? Or um, yeah, that's fine. Um, well, I mean, I'll start with day one. Uh, day one was uh, very <laughs> scary. <laughs> Um, I got there and I was like, quickly realized like, oh crap, what did I get myself into? Right. Um, okay. But uh, it kind of all evened out, you know, a few weeks in and I was never really good at high school. Um, never good at taking tests. Um, okay. And it, this really kind of, it needed a lot of attention, um, mm-hmm. hours and hours of studying. And um, yeah, uh, meeting a lot of the people there, you know, all the other cadets and stuff, uh, everybody had their own goals. And um, everybody kind of piggybacked off each other uh, with studying and, and doing study groups. And um, it's just, it all worked out at the end. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. do you have? Uh, you know, I'll add to that. Just back to that first day. Uh, you show up and it's six six 6.45 for inspection. And, and you're thinking, oh, my gosh, what did I get myself into? Mm-hmm. Like, you're, you start doing punishment for stuff that you wouldn't think you'd get punishment for. Uh but at the end of the day, it strengthened us, and it showed us where we were weak at, so that through that six-month progress, we could strengthen that the entire time. Um, and so 
touching on the academic side, uh, if you were never, if you've never challenged yourself to either think outside the box or pay attention to close details, that police academy really forced you to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. And so for me, it was a challenge because uh, I was coming from UT and I, it was a totally different curriculum that I had to adapt to. Uh, mm -hmm. Different language, different lingo that I had to learn. And uh, mm -hmm. for me, it was a, it was a challenge. Uh, but it, at the end, I overcame it, and I think that's the, the focal point that I could bring about the academy, that it teaches you to overcome where you're weak at. Well, what I want to know is what you were punished for. <laughs> oh. Can you to share? I was, yeah, I can share that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got a disciplinary action for, for getting the shave the second day I was in. Okay. Uh, yeah, that one was rough. Uh, and so we, we as a group had to collectively be part of this punishment. Uh, what was it, like burpees or something like something that? Something like you that. You had to do some yeah. burpees, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, some burpees, Okay. Yeah. Uh, burpees and push-ups. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's good for you. Yeah. I, I was subject to showing up an hour late on one day, and so we, uh, we got to remind ourselves that we needed to show up on time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> got to do some running, so. Right. Yeah. So you guys were part of an an inaugural idea to, uh, to come for the city to enter into um, an agreement with you guys as you went into the academy. Uh, mm -hmm. Was that a difference maker for you in deciding to, to go? That um, depending on whether or not we had positions available when you graduated, that you had a place to land here in the Bastrop Police Department? Uh, I, knew, I knew from the start that I wanted to go to the city. Okay. Um, okay. But... Um, you know, my parents, um, we all kind of got together and decided, you know, I'm just going to go to Police Academy. And so I prepared okay. um, to leave my job, um, you know, my whole savings account and just, just go and, mm -hmm. you know, without a job for six months. And, mm -hmm. um, and I was very happy when I did see the position open up that it was going to take a lot of the stress off of me from having to do a lot of the, um, the, uh, the stuff to go to the academy. Right. Um, and know that I have a job coming out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was prepared just to go and cool. find out wherever I land when I get out. Okay, awesome. Yeah, for me, it was, it was pretty much the same. Okay. Uh, when I was told that we may or may not have a position available right. for you, sure. it was probably like, you know what, I'm still going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, even if there are four better officers than myself, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, but then when they had confirmed that we would have a job at, mm -hmm. when we finished, I was like, you know what? All I got to focus on is finishing. I don't need to focus on finding a job, looking for, for mm -hmm. jobs afterwards, or having backup plans. As mm -hmm. soon as they secured that position for me, I was like, yeah, this is, this is where I want to be. Because uh, they, they sponsored us through the academy, uh, well, the city sponsored us through the academy, mm -hmm. uh, paid for, for everything that we needed throughout, uh, even for things that were last minute or maybe things that we needed. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just a huge burden lifted off of us. We didn't have to go out and be like, well, I'll graduate from the police academy. Maybe I'll go to APD. Maybe I'll go to Elgin. Maybe I'll go to uh, Lockhart or something. No, but Bastrop secured that for us. And so it was, we're grateful for it. Well, good. I'm glad to hear all of that. Uh, cities all over central Texas and maybe all over Texas are um, really competing with each other to make sure we can fill those critically important positions. Um, not just police, but certainly police. And, and we, we need to get creative. We need to think about all of that competitively. We, uh, we, we know that young people like you guys have choices. Mm -hmm. you, 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 there's any number of municipal police agencies, school police agencies, um, counties that are also uh, struggling to keep their positions filled. And, you know, and one, one of the ways we, we try to do that is to make sure our, our salaries are competitive, and that's obviously important. But uh, from our experience, it's not the only thing. Um, uh, making sure we have relationship with you guys as you're going through the academy is, is certainly one of the things we do. So um, you both started on March 21st, right? That's just been a mm -hmm. few weeks. We're, we're recording this on um, April the 7th. So it's, what, three weeks now that you guys have been on the job. How, how's it going so far? Uh, this is the best experience of my life. Oh, wow. Uh, and the reason okay. why I say that is 
at UT uh, and in schooling in general, you learn you have to be multifaceted. You have to have a, a, a wide skill set, a wide skill range. Sure. Uh, you got to be able to uh, adapt to a mm-hmm. number of problems that you may face within the private sector. Uh, and so you move into a, a career where you're able to do all those things. And then on top of that, be able to help people, I, I think, was just the, the best part for me. Uh, and the last three weeks have been, uh, again, me learning, uh, me correcting uh, where I'm weak at, and then doing it over and over again. Oh, that's great. Good. Um, yeah, I mean, almost basically the same thing he said. Okay. Uh, all right. I see a lot of similarities from, you know, my past at the fire department and also at dispatch. Sure. Um, you know, everything at dispatch I did online on the back end, talking to the victims, right. but now it's actually talking to them in person mm-hmm. and it's a whole different set of questions to ask. And, right. um, it's a little different. Um, but it's a good different. I, I really do enjoy it. You're, you're, you're not the first new officer we've brought in and, and have had this experience in other cities too, that come from a dispatch kind of background. Yeah. And I, can imagine it's awfully helpful yeah, to have it, that kind of background to know what's going on on that end of the communication. Yeah, well, I keep telling him is like I couldn't imagine myself not knowing how to talk on the radio, and then have to also think about all the other stuff we have to think about on a call. Right. Because it's like continuously having to think about okay, how do I say this on the radio? When yeah. it, for me, it's just you know second nature. I've done it for you know two years now, so right. It's just it, it's be daunting to me to have to do what he has to do. So, are you busy? We don't use that. that, that, that <laughs> we don't use that word. Uh, um, okay. We've been steady. We've been steady. Uh, okay. We don't want to jinx anything. Gotcha. Uh, today. We've been good, good job. <laughs> I didn't but, uh, mean that to be a test, but no, thank you. No, no yeah. problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, we've we've been good. Uh, the people, the citizens of Bastrop, have been treating us well too, uh, yeah. and I think that is the greatest thing about Bastrop when you have that community support. I uh, don't have to worry about uh, is my interaction with so and so going to do something or be bad? And then it's like, no, not here in Bastrop. So uh, I don't know if you want to add to that or no. Everybody I've talked to, um, you know, people just walk up and be like, hey, I remember you from the Facebook post. Congratulations, on, you know, mm-hmm. on, on graduating. Um, that happened in one of the banks, you know, the other day. And oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was just yeah. you know, it reminded me that hey, like you know, everybody does watch and everybody does know what's going on and um, you know, and the city does you know back you on that. So. I think I can affirm that this is a pretty special place as it regards all of that. Um, Mm -hmm. You you guys, you and your entire department and and other city employees as well are are the subject of prayer in Bastrop every single day. Uh, I I know that because uh, people tell me that and it's it's, it's really, really cool. And I, I don't know to what extent you've had the opportunity to meet with any of the chaplains. Um, what a great bunch of people here. Uh, they just sincerely uh, care about your safety and how well you're able to communicate with the public. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really, it's really pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and, and I think, I think kind, of, kind of unique. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, have you had an opportunity to watch any of the other Overheard at City Hall podcasts? It, I watched the, what was it, the one you had last? It was about five I watched five minutes of it, and then I, okay. I, I fell asleep. Didn't it, uh, you, you fell asleep? Yeah, I fell asleep. I was tired. Oh I gosh. just got off shift. Not right. because it was boring. I okay. just fell asleep. Uh, okay, we'll have to work on that one. But it was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think for the city, I asked you to be honest right? for the city. This is, this is important because uh, uh-huh. it gives the community a chance. If they don't have the opportunity to meet us personally, yeah. they can go and figure out everything about us here. Well, that's what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. What we're trying to do with these podcasts is introduce uh, the community to, to city employees. The, mm-hmm. the podcast are city employee centric in that way. We want, um, we want people to be able to get to, to know you. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, for me, I was in the hiring process still, and uh, I knew quite a bit about the police department. knew a lot of people there just through dispatch, but I kind of don't want to get more, you know, I have an understanding of, you know, who the chief is, you know, and right. stuff like that. So 
y'all did a podcast pretty early on with uh, Chief Nagy. Oh, is it, it was um, episode two or three? It was two. Yeah. Colin's telling me it was two. Yeah. So, so um, do you know all the sergeants' names? I know most of them. <laughs> uh, if you put me on the spot, I'll trip over them. But uh, yeah, I know almost. Probably, I know. I know all of the yeah. sergeants. Yeah. So, so the inside joke there is that. The, oh, the, there, the he chief kind of struggled he with did. the. Yes. Re, I, yeah, and I don't <laughs> prepare people for these podcasts. And I said, mm-hmm. Chief, well, tell me about your sergeants. And he named like three of them and yeah. forgot three of them. And it was, <laughs> and no, we didn't edit that out. It was actually yeah, pretty, it was pretty funny. funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, I won't ask you to list your sergeants' names, but who's your FTO? Uh, my FTO is Officer Barnes. Right. Okay. I have uh, Sergeant Sanford. All right. It's been very good work with. Yeah. Well, they're both, they're, they're, they're both tremendous people. They, mm-hmm. they really are. And my, my experience has been, um, having, having a police department with police leadership that the community can, can trust is mm-hmm. the most important thing in, in the world. And, uh, uh Chief Nagy, Chief Stefanik, who, by the way, really runs the thing, right? If you guys, I've noticed, yeah, yeah you noticed. Okay. Um, and, and all of the sergeants, they're just, they're just solid people who just, in my humble opinion, emanate trustworthiness. And they, they, they come from the heart, and it's, it's really comforting. You guys have a, a difficult and dangerous job, and uh, not to mi- make light of any of that, it's, it's a very serious job. People need you guys, and, uh, um, and people need to be able to trust you. And so mm-hmm. you're, you're part of that, that legacy now. Uh, you and a couple of other uh, fairly new hires that, um, that we're pretty excited about too. I don't know the extent to which you've gotten to work with them and know them, but um, I've been um, really pleased with the quality of young people we've been able to bring in in such a competitive mm-hmm. kind of environment, right? There's a lot of places you guys can go to work. I'm just yeah. glad the city decided to do it again, you know, because it yeah, yeah. gave us a chance and, um, you know, both of us being from Bastrop. And do it again. You're talking about the whole cadet, the cadet academy yeah. experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm hearing just tremendous things about those two people, right? Mm-hmm. So, Jalen, you were the valedictorian of the class, right? Uh, not the valedictorian, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I wish I was. He was, uh, he was okay. off the start. I, I, I oh, was off did the you start. fade at the end? Okay. Yeah, I faded towards the end. Uh-huh. I, I, uh, I was the class president, though. Oh, you were uh, the class president. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. And, no, you're you're perfectly fine. Um, no, that was a that was a weird experience for me. I was also the youngest. Uh, okay. At the academy, and so when you had these all these people ranging from from 22 to to what was the oldest? 49. 49. Yeah. 49, and then they're looking at me, the youngest. Like you're going to be our class president. Uh, that for me. Yeah, that they was saw like, you coming. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for me, that that was a, a sort of just a. It changed my perception uh, because I was like, "Wow, all these people who are older than me, who I would have put as president, voted on me." So, what were the highlights uh, of your graduation speech? Or maybe I should ask Dylan. What were the highlights of his graduation speech? Um, I think the best part about it was that he recognized every single person that graduated. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, he said something good about every every person, and mm-hmm. um, it shows that he's a true leader when it comes to that. Oh man, leaders, that's what you guys are. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. All right, any questions for the city manager from you guys? Um, no, not really. I mean, do you yeah, have any? No, I don't. Okay, that's I the way we like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't have okay. any questions. Well, cool. Listen, this was real enjoyable for me. Thank you guys for doing it. Thanks for what you do. Um, I'll say again, there are people in this community who care very deeply about you and are concerned about your, your safety. So uh, be careful and um, we're looking forward to a relationship with you guys for a long time to come. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Mm-hmm.